Okay, Canon is changing the game in a miraculous way, especially here in 2024. Let's just go over some of the releases that they made this year. They released the R1, the R5 Mark II, the 28 to 70 2.8 USM lens, the 35 1.4 LVCM, and now today they just released the 24 1.4 VCM, the 50 1.4 VCM, and a 70 to 200 L internal zoom lens. Canon has been going absolutely nuts this year. They really might have just won 2024. Now there's a lot of things to be excited about with these new products, but I'm mainly going to be focusing on the lenses. Why am I so excited about these new lenses they just released? Now I'm really excited about these new three prime lenses that Canon released, the 2414, the 3514, and the 5014 but I'm also equally as excited for the 28 to 70 USM lens, even though that's a contemporary lens. Now, why am I so excited about a lens that's external zoom, contemporary, not as sharp as an L lens? Let me tell you, Canon's releases have been all about consistency. Now, what do I mean by consistency? If you look at the 2414, you look at the 3514, you look at the 5014, and you look at the 28 to 70 2.8, the common theme about them is that they all have a 67 millimeter thread size. What does this mean? It means that as hybrid shooters like myself, I do photo and some video, we have to buy filters, ND filters, black mist filters, whatever. We can buy one size filter and use them on four separate lenses. You couldn't do that with all the other lenses like an 8512 or a 512 or a 24 to 70 2.8. They all have different filter sizes. So you have to buy uh, 82 millimeter or 87 whatever size they come in and then buy step-up rings which is fine there's nothing wrong with doing that i use step-up rings for myself currently like right now i'm, I'm recording on a 1.4 or 1 fourth black mist filter 67 millimeter whatever i'm using a separate ring right now but the fact that we can buy one filter and use it across all four lenses is going to be exceptional for us hybrid shooters and imagine that you have a gimbal like Okay, let me grab mine. Imagine you have a gimbal like this. This is the Zion Weeble 3E that just came out this year. Imagine this is your gimbal, right? This is a very nice, small, compact hybrid gimbal, but needs to be rebalanced and recalibrated after every change of weight. So with all lenses being a 67 millimeter thread size, although they differ in weight just a little bit, you won't have to go through a ton of hassle to try and rebalance this gimbal. So if you're on a wedding day, you need to change lenses or you want to change from the 50 to the 35 or the 35 to the 24, it's not going to be that hard to rebalance because they're so close in weight that you might not even have to do anything really. And that's the great part about these new hybrid lenses to me is that it's so consistent in size amongst them all. Also, another reason why I love the size of these new lenses is, let me grab my camera bag. This is my camera bag, Mosiso backpack fits to a 17 inch laptop. It's a decent size, but when it comes to talking about an 85.12 or a 28 to 70 F2 or a 51.2, those lenses will not fit in here. Or if they do fit in here, you're only gonna fit one in there. So the pockets aren't really big enough to fit all these big filter lenses, heavy lenses, stuff like that. But what does fit in here is my 85 millimeter F2, which is, surprise, surprise, a 67 millimeter thread size. Can I open this up without anything falling out? Let's see if I can. Uh, oh gosh. Okay. So this is inside my camera bag. All the lenses are not in there. Uh, they're somewhere around here, I'm sure. But a 67 millimeter lens is going to fit in here perfectly and multiple times with the camera body fitting up top. With all these other big lenses, they aren't gonna fit in here and I don't really feel like spending $300 on a think tank carry-on travel bag to fit all my lenses. So in the name of consistency and in the name of hybridism and in the name of ease to use and quality and fitting in bags, dude, these are amazing lenses. And let's look at the price on these lenses too. The 28 to 70 contemporary lens, USM, is $1,100, which is a great price for beginners and people who don't have $3,000 to spend on a 28-70 F2. And that lens also has weather sealing. You really only see that on L-series lenses, but a contemporary lens having weather sealing, that changes the game. Now, obviously the optics on that lens aren't going to match with the 28-70 F2, but it does have better optics than your other standard contemporary zoom lenses. Or how about the 35 F1.4 sitting at $1,500? That's not a crazy price 
for an L series lens. When you look at all these other prime lenses at 1.2 and stuff like that, these things are like $3,000. A lot, everybody doesn't have that kind of money to spend. So when you talk about the new voice coil, coil motor, which is going to have you know better focus breathing, uh, faster autofocus and stuff like that, because if you ever use the 85 F2, the focus breathing on that is pretty atrocious. But to have better autofocus, better quality optics, better, you know, whatever, it doesn't have image stabilization, but it, everything pretty much about it is better. That's not a bad price when you think about it. And check this out. At time of this recording, the new internal zoom 70 to 200 is $3,000, which is expected. The 24 millimeter 1.4 is $1,500, the same price as 35, which isn't that crazy. And the new 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter F1.4 is $1,400, which is a crazy price. So when you look at all these new lenses and the price point of all these, now, like I said earlier, there's gonna be people that said, well, there should have been better. There should have been this, there should have been that. I'm not going to argue with that. There could have been other things presented or whatever, I, you know, whatever. But when you talk about hybrid shooters, photographers, videographers at this price point and at that quality that it gives, no brainer, no brainer, especially for people who don't have the biggest budget or, or aren't like super into professional photography, videography, stuff like that. These lenses are it. So I'm super excited for what Canon's releasing. And also they've been rumoring this R6 Mark III. I'm recording on the R6 Mark II. I, it's just a rumor right now, so I don't really know anything about that. But Canon won 2024. Okay, they won 2024, hands down. You know, I'm not gonna argue. Argue with your mama, argue with your daddy, argue with your grandpa doo, -doo whatever. I'm excited for these new Canon products. I can't wait to get my hands on them. I'm going to order them, test them out, and we're gonna make some crazy, crazy reviews upcoming, okay? Now, of, of course, before I get my hands on it, it's probably gonna be a bunch of reviews out, but my review is gonna be my review, okay? So anyway, that's it for today's video. Super excited. I had to wake up, hop in the shower, and hop in front of this camera and make this video just because, and to show my excitement and share my excitement about the Canon news, all right? So until next time, leave your comments down in the description about you know, this video, things you wanted to see in the new lenses, your thoughts on the new lenses, whatever, and like and subscribe if you made it this far. All right, cool, peace.